Uh, my question has to do with the uh, federal land change in exchange for state or private land ownership, because I, I think that deals with a lot of the issues that we have. It would help pay for education. It would contribute to job creation, economy, environment, uh, energy, those kind of things. So my question to you is, all four of you, is what is your specific plan for getting the nearly 70 percent of federal land back into the state ownership or private private ownership? Well, first and foremost, uh, I have just talked about it. I've done something about it in the state legislature. In fact, I joined with a core group of state representatives, including uh, Carl, that we fought back against the federal government. We need to take back control of our federal lands. Uh, the enacting clause that was signed as a contract between the federal government and the state of Utah has been violated. We should have control of those lands as a state. Now, we could solve a lot of our country's energy needs by doing so, but most importantly, we could solve the education funding issues here in the state of Utah if we could get control back of our federal lands. And that's what we have to do. Now, if you look at the issue out there, this is one of the places where Jim Matheson has not helped the state of Utah at all. He did not fight to stop the uh, oil, I mean, the cancellation of the natural gas leases we had by the Obama administration. He hasn't fought and worked with our other delegation to take back control of our federal lands. And we have to do that. Now, I have actually co-sponsored uh, every piece of legislation or ran legislation in the state legislature to push back against our federal government, take control back of our lands. It's the lands that we deserve. It's the land that actually was committed uh, by the federal government to be turned back to us as a state. We can do that. We can solve our energy independence problem, and we can have the state uh, have the uh, funding we need for education. Yeah, I agree. This is a very serious issue. And if you look back over this period of time, you'll see if you look at Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 in the Constitution, it gives very unique instructions as to what land the federal government can control in a state. And it's, it's usually a five by five square parcel of land that they lay claim to. Think Hill Air Force Base. That's federally controlled land. All of the other land is in violation of our enactment clause where those pieces of land were supposed to be sold off and the state was supposed to collect a portion of that revenue and it's supposed to go towards our educational system. There's a couple things that we need to specifically do here in the state. And as, as, as Steve Sandstrom did, you don't have to guess where I'm at on this issue because I have a history over the last five years of fighting this issue, co-sponsoring strong legislation that started the eminent domain process over that land. In fact, we're using a Supreme Court case out of Hawaii where the Supreme Court ruled that subsequent acts of Congress cannot override a state's enabling act. Well, they have overridden our enabling act where those lands were supposed to come back to the state. One thing that we can do immediately that I'm committed to as your congressman is to repeal the Antiquities Act. The Antiquities Act is the piece of legislation that allows the president, just through his signature, to lock up pieces of land here in the state of Utah. Think Grand Staircase Escalante. That needs to stop. Um, first, to make one thing clear, I think the state of Utah needs to get their lands back. Right? Uh, I, I agree with that. And I understand the state's frustration uh, with the inaction of the federal government or the lack of response from the federal government. But i got to tell you, um, I, I know the bills that have just been passed, but i, I got to be honest, I don't think they're going to get you the result you want. Uh, you know, if you look at it, I know the Hawaii case, I think ultimately you're going to lose in court. So, you know, how would I get the lands back then? I, I think we can do a couple things. One thing I think we can do is I would really like to see the state actually pass a law that says what they're actually going to do with these lands once they get them back. And I would hope that they would put a lot of that to education. So it is concretely established that these lands are for education. I think that can change the debate a little bit back in Washington, D.C., maybe actually get some legislation in different committees. Uh, it gives us more room to work with in D.C. I think ultimately this is going to be a political solution, and it's getting our, not only our congressional delegation aligned and fighting really hard, but also others in the western states. But again, there's things states can do to help us on that. And I'd actually love to see, for example, um, you know, if, if we talk about how the Department of Education might be scaled back, you know, why not we take the lands instead of some of the money that, that we know is not going to be there forever and some other options that we can have when we actually frame this up more squarely by legislation that's passed in the state saying this is what we're going to do with the land. Okay. Thank you. Mia. Okay, I've been an advocate for, for giving the federal lands to the people since uh, 1976. And I've watched the history of this and put it in my books uh, for the last 36 years. One of the historical facts is that the state, state proposals along this line don't work. 
The reason they don't work is because in the Constitution, uh, Article 4, Section uh, 3 states that Congress shall dispose of the land. That's their constitutional responsibility. Now, I'm not saying that the states, state legislature shouldn't do that, but they know it's going to fail. The, the, uh, the Attorney General's office even said it's very, very unlikely this one would fail. But I applaud their efforts. But it, what has to be done is somebody who understands this issue thoroughly, like I do, understands the economic impacts, understands the energy environment, to go to Congress to create an Energy Homestead Act which could be very popular because the economic situation is so bad, to gather everybody around him and say, we've got to have support of this, we've got to save our economy, which will save our nation, we've got to start developing, we've got to bring our economy back, and that's what I will do.